Hey, PC. Here's risen. He is risen. Indeed. All right, you still remember. That's good. That's good. All right. Well, welcome to Mountain View Presbyterian Church. I'm David Dendy. I get to be the pastor here and nine years running, so let's keep it going, I hope, and pray. Uh, a few announcements uh, before we get started. Today, we ha- it didn't make it in the bulletin for some reason, but today we have a baptism at Second Service. We're celebrating little Ellen, uh, Iris Eleanor Fox getting baptized. She's like four months old, five, four or five months old. So, exciting day in the life of the church. Our flowers today are from Linda Hunt. Linda, thank you very much for the beautiful flowers. Uh, this Tuesday, we have our dementia support uh, seminar, um, and that is at, oh, what time is that at? 10 o'clock? 10 o'clock, okay, meeting in the chapel. And then Wednesday, there's the dementia support group meeting at, t- at 11 o'clock in the chapel as well. Exciting times here at Mountain View Presbyterian Church. This Wednesday at 11 o'clock right here in the sanctuary, we're starting a new group, a new prayer group. So if you like to, like, if you like to pray, come on out. We're starting a new group. Uh, we're going to get together once a week, pray, pray for the community, pray for the world, pray for the needs of our church. Uh, but just a, a group to get, get, to get together and pray together. So, exciting times. Um, how many of you have ever fallen in your life? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, were you pushed or did you trip? Uh, that's the question. Uh, so, th- this Saturday, if you never ever want to fall again, this Saturday, um, uh, my wife Julie, uh, who's a trained physical therapist, works as a physical therapist, is doing a fall prevention class. Uh, I think it's, it's going to be in the fellowship hall. Is that right? Oh, in the chapel. Okay, in the chapel. And what time is that? Nine o'clock in the morning? Ten o'clock? Okay. Allison said, I don't know if you caught it, but she said my two favorite words. You're right. I love that. I love it when I hear that. It's just like the two best words in the world. Um, so with that in mind, let's stand up and greet each other and just say, you're right to the person next to you.
our prayer of confession. Almighty God, you have accepted our Lord's sacrifice for our salvation and have crowned him Lord of all. By your power, you have raised him from the dead. You have clothed him again with flesh so that his disciples might recognize him. We humbly confess that while we know the story and believe it, it often has made too little difference in our lives, and at times we have been silent when we should have spoken of it. We have gone along with the ways of the world and to give him glory. Forgive us, we pray, of these sins. Enable us today to reflect more deeply on the sacred story, that our obedience may be increased, that our service may be more joyful, and our testimony may be more courageous. Hear us in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus. Amen. Our assurance of pardon is from Psalm 30, verses 10 and 11. Hear me, Lord. Oh, have pity and help me. Then the Lord turned my sorrow into joy. He took away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy so that I might sing glad praises to the Lord instead of lying in silence in the grave. O oh, Lord my God, I will keep on thanking you forever. And like King David, we can continue thanking God forever because of his Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Our sins are forgiven. Woohoo! Woo <laughs> Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen, amen. Hey, I'd like to invite our children coming up for our time together. Come on up. Come on around. Come on, Tate. All right. Come on this way, buddy. Woo! Super Tate. All right. Good job, buddy. How are you? Good to see you. Dean, how you doing, buddy? All right. Come on over. Come on over. Over here, this way. So, has anybody ever done something mean to you? Yes. Yes? At times? At times? What, like what? Somebody. Yeah? Somebody. They say something mean? They kicked you? No. Oh, that's no fun. That hurts, huh? Come over here. Come here in the circle. Well, that's no fun. You got, you got kicked? Did you kick him back? Yes. Ooh, all right. <laughs> Honest answer. That's good. I, me too. I've kicked people back when they've kicked me. You bet. Come on in. Come here. Come in the circle. Your teachers did not do that? Oh, your classmate? Oh, that's no good. Do you know what you Anybody ever done something mean to you before? Many, many years ago when I was, when I was about his age. Were you? Yeah. They kick you I, too? Um, that, I, you know, I don't remember that, that far back. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's hard though. It's hard, yeah. It is, it's, and it's sometimes, right, like you said, yeah, well, sometimes, say, like you said, sometimes we want to kick people back huh, after they kick us. But Jesus has other plans for us. And so sometimes, remember, if you remember uh, a while ago, we talked about being in this side, this circle, we yes. do the wrong things, right? Yes. I remember and we're trapped in our sin. And that Jesus frees us and he opens the door for us. Yes. But sometimes we trap ourselves mm -hmm. with unforgiveness. When, when somebody kicks us, right, Tate? 
then, then we kick them back. And, and, or we're like, oh, I hope they get what's coming to them. And, and we, we, we trap ourselves more and more. And then we become more bitter. Yep. We become more cynical. We yep. become more angry. Yep. And all of a sudden, yep. we're trapped. Yes. You can't move. And we can't move. And we're stuck. I can move. Yeah, exa- <laughs> exactly. That's because you're smart. Good, yeah. good. Push it out, push it out. Good, you can push it out. There, keep going, keep going. And so God wants us to forgive, forgive. Yep. so that we can be free. And then we can walk out, walk out. Exactly. There we go. We're free. Yeah. All right, all right. And then we walk away, right? Now, in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, it says, be tenderhearted. That means be kind and, and, and be gentle, uh, forgiving one another, just as in Christ, God forgave us. Just like uh, Miss Christie just shared with us in the prayer of confession, that God forgives us through Jesus Christ. And so we can do the same thing for others. We can forgive them and not get stuck thinking bad thoughts about them or kicking them back or punching them in the face. Or You still do that? Well, you know, sometimes. I'll tell you a secret. I do the same thing sometimes too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we'll ask God to help us, all right? How about that? Let's do that. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus thank, you for today. thank you for today. Thank you for dying for me and for rising from the grave and giving me new life. And please help me when people kick me or say mean things or do hurtful things. Help me to forgive them and pray for them instead of being mad at them. Forever. Forever. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, guys. Good job. All right. Thanks, buddy. We'll see you later. Thanks. All right. The uh, praise for us or offers the congregational prayer. Uh, just one announcement. Um, I, like Carrie, uh, passed away last or two weeks ago, I guess on the 27th of March, and so I just wanted to bring you up to date on that. And then, hold on one moment. Hey, Tate, yeah, I'm going to kick you. Boom, how about that? <laughs> All right. Hey, Richard, stand up over here, buddy. So Richard, our, our organist, Richard, come on over here. Um, his mom had to go in for emergency surgery today, uh, Noreen, and so we're going to pray for her right now, okay? Uh, gracious God, we pray for Noreen uh, having emergency surgery and uh, I'm so thankful she has a son like Richard um, and uh, supporting her and loving her. And I'm and, um, so thankful that he has a great ministry here at our church uh, through the gift of music. And so we pray for Noreen. And we pray for those doctors who are at work and uh, nurses and techs and whoever else is in, in there helping out. And we pray especially your healing hand uh, to be upon her, to restore her unto full health, get her home and back to full health. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thanks, buddy. All right. Thanks. Please pray with me. Merciful God, as we bask in the grace of this after Easter Sunday, We stand in awe of your boundless love. May your grace, which flowed through the resurrection, envelop us in its warmth, too. Grant us wisdom to walk in the light of your grace, forgiving others as we have been forgiven, and sharing this unmerited favor with others. Our Lord Jesus Christ, On this Sunday after Easter, the light of your love shines on, same as ever. Your light has come into this world, and neither darkness nor evil nor death itself can overtake it. We praise you and thank you for that. Awaiting spirit, we invite you into our hearts to fill us with joy that will continue to lead us in worship, in gratefulness, and in service. It's just so humbling that you know us by name, Father, and call us by name every morning. 
like you called Mary at the tomb. You are calling each of us right now by name. Hear us as we speak to you in silence. And Father, as we are your children, workers here at MVPC, together we pray for our community, our local and national leaders. We pray for our sick, our hurting, our lonely among us. We strain for answers to meanness, violence and wars, and find none. We know this is your world and trust all is taking place according to your will until our Lord Jesus returns in the second coming. Use us, however, to be light in the darkness around us. And with a smile, we thank you for the daily God winks you send to us. Thank you that we have each other to enjoy, to learn and work with, to be enjoyed by, to love on, and mostly to share in worship. Together we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Christy. Well, our missionary in Cambodia, her name is Shayla, and uh, she uh, entered the country in, in January. And so this first year is uh, time for training, uh, learning the language, learning the history, learning the culture of Cambodia. And so, and so that's what she's doing now in, uh, in this first year there uh, in Cambodia. And so she sends out a monthly newsletter and lets us know uh, kind of some of the things that she's learning and all. And so uh, this is, uh, we just received this and, uh, and I, just found it, I just found it fascinating. I hope you do too. In Cambodia, it's estimated that there, are, uh, there, there remain between four to six million landmines. Uh, and 30 million ERWs, those are explosive remnants of war, left in the Cambo Cambodian soil over the past uh, 75 years of conflict. Uh, many still remain. Since 1979, 65,000 people have died as a result of ste stepping on these landmines. So there's an organization that's working diligently to try and locate and then, uh, and then remove these landmines. And uh, they have found a fast, simple, and cost-effective clearance technology. Let's put this on the screen. Rats. Look at those cute beady eyes. That beautiful tail, those sharp teeth. Don't you just love rats? Maybe our pet ministry, we can have a rat blessing. <laughs> so uh, uh, these are uh, African giant pouched rats. And they've got a keen sense of smell, high intelligence, and the ability to be trained. And, uh, and their size is just perfect. So uh, you have to be 11 pounds to, uh, to detonate a landmine. Uh, just wrap your mind around that. A one and a half year old toddler can detonate a landmine. You have to be 11 pounds. Uh, these, these rats, 4.5 pounds. And they're trained <clears throat> to indicate when the, de uh, when, the ex when the explosives are nearby, their trainers mark the spot, and then the demining team investigates with metal detectors, and they're able to remove or safely detonate the buried landmine. Uh, in this way, the land becomes safe once again for children to play, communities to live, and farmers to grow, uh, grow their crops. Bottom line, 
They're called hero rats. And hero rats save lives. Uh, Shayla writes this. She says, on the one hand, rats seem to have no redeeming attri attributes. They're vermin, dirty, and feeding on trash. They carry deadly diseases, fleas, and bacteria everywhere they go. They live in the gutters and the trash heap, creeping around in filth. However, this is what God does with us. He accepts us as we are. He saves us, and then he redeems and he repurposes us. And isn't this just like God, to take a rat and use it for his purposes to bring salvation and healing, saving lives? Why don't you turn to your neighbor and say, you look like a hero rat to me. <laughs> <coughs>
Thank you, Chancellor Choir. Oh. Thank you, Chancellor Choir. We are called to walk humbly, yes, with our God. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the book of Romans, chapter 3, verses 21 through 26. This is the first Sunday of the month, and so in the month, uh, uh, not no, the month, the year of uh, 2024, the first Sunday of each month, we're taking a look at the theme of forgiveness. And so today we look at the theme of forgiveness. So let's listen now to God's word. Paul writes this to the church in Rome. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. May God add his blessing to the reading, the hearing, the understanding, the application of this, his holy word. Let us pray. The gracious God, may we decrease and may you increase. And may the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. You are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So every Sunday morning, uh, my, my, one of my best friends, Father Mac, who's an Episcopal priest up in Napa Valley, tough calling up there. Um, but he and I, we, we text each other along with his daughter. Um, she calls us the righteous gemstones for some reason. And um, so we, we have a little banter back and forth every Sunday morning, every Sunday morning. And so usually Mac tells me what he's preaching on. I tell him what I'm preaching on. And he said, today he's preaching on confession. I said, today I'm preaching on expiation and propitiation. He said, David, <laughs> Edmund Hillary had an easier time climbing out Mount Everest than you will have in the pulpit today. And so uh, every now and then I get a wild hair and I think, oh, this will be a good idea to talk about expiation and propitiation. And then this morning I thought, why did I do that? Why did I do that? Have, has anybody used these words in sentences this past week? Have you ever used them in your whole entire life? Uh, maybe only if you were happen to be reading this, pa this passage. So expiation or propitiation, uh, that's, the, that's the question of the day. Uh, we, we had our verses here, and I'm sure reading these verses made a whole lot of sense to you. Uh, righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Who's that? Jesus. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Who's all? That's all of us. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. That's why we have profession, confession of faith every Sunday. That's why there's such joy when we are told we're forgiven through Jesus Christ. That's why we whoop and holler. Um, uh, we all fall short, but th they are justified by His grace. God's grace as a gift through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as an expiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies him who has faith in Jesus. That make perfect sense to you? Yeah, of course. So expiation, what is expiation? So we have the, 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 the prefix ex, meaning put out or out from. Uh, and so how many of you have ever been or seen pictures or photographs or seen it in person, the Sistine Chapel? We've been over there. We went, we, our family went over there a couple of years ago, had a marvelous time looking at the, the ceiling. And so uh, the ceiling was painted by Michelangelo in the year... 1952, yes. <laughs> Thank you very much from the choir. Um, 1481, um, 
back, back around that time. So, so uh, 500 years later, um, in 1980, um, the, the, well, this is, this is what, this is what the, the creation of man by Michelangelo in the Sistine Chapel, this is what it looked like. And people, all, everyone just thought this is what it looks like. Um, but after 500 years of candles and soot and oil and dirt and dust and all that stuff, this is what the ceiling looks like. And someone had the brilliant idea. I wonder if that's really the true colors. I mean, I wonder if that's really what it looked like when Michelangelo painted it, painted the frescoes there. So someone said, well, let, let's, let's start a restoration process. Let's remove some of the dirt. Painstakingly process, painstaking process. Uh, it took four years uh, to, to clean uh, the, the, the ceiling. And so, um, so this is what it looks like afterward. Wow. See the difference? It's all just, you know, God has a pink shirt on. Well, maybe not. Um, more like white. And so, isn't that fascinating? Um, that this is what, this is what expiation is. It's, this is what we look like before. Through Christ, our sin is removed and we become more pure, more clean. So expiation, compensation for a wrong. Uh, the act of atoning for sin or wrongdoing, especially appeasing a deity. And so for us, because uh, I don't know if, I know, we, we go through Holy Week, and every, every Sunday we look at this cross, and I don't know, maybe you think, like I think sometimes, what actually happened on the cross? What was the purpose of the cross? Why did Jesus have to die? Can we have done this another way? And so, um, so expiation, um, oops, Christ removed and put away our sin once and for all. We are like the Sistine Chapel. We've got dirt all over us and everything. And Christ comes and says, hey, let me remove that. Let, let me take it away. Let me, let me expiate it. Let me, let me get rid of it for you. And, and the way he does it is removes our sin because he takes on, this, he takes on the sin of the world on his shoulders. Uh, Paul writes, he who had no sin was made to be sin. Now, that doesn't mean that Jesus became a sinner. It just means he just took on the sin of the world to appease, to expiate, to ex appease, to appease God. Because God is righteous. God is holy. God is perfect. And if God is holy and perfect and righteous and all that, how is he going to deal with us when all of us have fallen short? All of us make mistakes. All of us, as you raised your hand earlier, we've all tripped and fallen, right? Somewhere along life, we fall down. We, we mess up. We make mistakes. We kick other people um, after they kick us. These type of things. And so, um, so how is God going to deal with that? How does God deal with us? Well, to satisfy his righteousness, he can't, he can't just say, he can't compromise his righteousness. He can't compromise his holiness and say, well, that's okay. Don't worry about it. No, because there's a holiness there. There's a righteousness there that can't just, well, it's okay. No, he expects righteousness. So Jesus says, I'll, I'll, I'll expiate all of us. I'll get rid of the dirt. I'll get rid of the dirt because I'll take on the sin. I'll be the sacrifice. And he is the perfect sacrifice. Why? Because... He's God. He's God's son. He's perfect. He is, he is completely righteous. He's a perfect sacrifice. He is what John the Baptist calls the Paschal Lamb. He's the Lamb of God. Perfect in every way. So there's, there's some scriptures uh, that tell us about Christ re removing the sin, from, God removing the sin from us once and for all. I, a psalmist says, as far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. Uh, you've seen me run down here sometimes. As far as the east is from the west, how far is that? It's pretty far. Um, God says, I, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. I think we remember our sins more than God remembers our sins. He says, uh, like, like Dean was up here saying, when was the last time you were kicked? He goes, I, I don't even remember. It was so long ago. And, and God says, your sins, 
I've forgiven them, I remember them no more. Yeah, there's no need for you to bring them up over and over again because I remember them no more. They, they've been forgiven. They've been washed away. And so, whew, ha, huh, it feels good. But in love, and this is Isaiah talking about, but in love you, God, have delivered my life from the pit of destruction for you have cast all my sins behind your back. You've taken them here and you just, whew, put them back there. You've, back there. No need, no need to turn around and, oh, you want to deal with that again? Whew, no, God said, no, let's put it back there. Let's move on. He says, you will, Micah says, you, God, will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. Uh, sometimes people call that the sea of forgiveness. Some people call it the sea of forgetfulness. You know, just throw it in there and don't, don't deal with it anymore. Uh, so that's, that's expiation, the, the getting rid of, of the sin. And Jesus is the one who gets rid of it for us because he's the substitutionary. You know, when, when um, we, we should be on the cross, right? Not Jesus. We're the ones who deserve it, right? But Jesus said, no, no, I'll, I'll, take, it, I'll take it instead of you. He's the substitutionary um, forgiveness for all of us. Then we get this word propitiation. Well, words matter. We talk about words matter around here. But 1 John tells us, and he himself, Jesus, is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. So the propitiation. Well, what does propitiation mean? Any, anybody ever live in the Midwest? Okay. You ever see one of these? Oh, ever see one of these before? Yeah, Wow. Here it comes. You know, you know something's coming. Some storm is coming. Um, boy, isn't that crazy looking? Wow. And, and why is it always, all these pictures always have like this dirt road going out in, into the middle of nowhere with some type of field nearby. Um, and then you've seen one of these, these tornado, these funnels. Um, when Faith was in first grade, we were living in, or second grade, we were living in Iowa, and uh, she came home one day and she said, oh, we, I said, what'd you learn at school today? Oh, we learned about tornadoes. I'm like, wow, what'd you learn? She said, well, it's when the hot air meets the cold air and then it doesn't go so well. <laughs> I'm like, well, that's, that's a good way to put it. And so, so uh, propitiation, this, is, this, this storm is coming. Um, the storm of judgment, the storm of righteous holiness. And we're going to get swept up in it because we're not righteous. We're not holy. And so, so here it comes. Here comes the storm. And it, and, it, and it has to come because it has to satisfy God's sense of holiness. And yet in the middle of the storm, there's a storm shelter. There's someone who's going to cover us provide shelter for us. I love this, this little house. It doesn't look like much, but it's a house in the midst of the storm. And God says, here comes, Jesus says, here comes the storm, and, and here you go. Let me, just, let me just cover you here and protect you. And, and I'll take the brunt of the storm, but I'll cover you. And so you don't have to worry about the storm of righteousness because I'm going to make you righteous by covering you. I'll take the brunt uh, uh, of that. And so... This is the meaning of the cross, that we are forgiven. We are, our, our sin is expiated because someone stood in front of the storm and said, I'll take it for you. Now, whose brilliant idea was this? Well, it was God's idea. This is, this is what I find fa even more fascinating. It was God's idea. Uh, because of why? Because he loves you. He loves me. This is what this is what this is the basis of everything. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son. So God, He's like, I love these people. I want these people to be with me. But boy, they they've gone off the rails. They've got they've gone off the deep end. Jesus says, "I'll go," and because I'm perfect and because I'm part of the Godhead, I'll go, and I and then that way I can make a sacrifice that's acceptable in your sight. You know, the, the, old, the way God set up is that, you know, in, in the Old Testament, uh, there is no forgiveness without what? Without the shedding of blood. So whose blood had to be shed? Well, it wasn't ours because it, it wasn't holy. So it was Jesus' blood on the cross shed for us so that we, so that sacrifice would be acceptable in God's sight. And that's why, that's why 
you know, we can say uh, you know, at, the, at the end of our days, when we go up there and, you know, the judgment seat and all that kind of stuff up in heaven, and uh, we appear before God, and, we, and who's, our, who's our advocate? Who's our attorney? That's Jesus. And God says, well, what, David, what do you have to say for yourself? And Jesus says, uh, he's with me. He's with me. And God looks and he looks and I just stand behind Jesus and all God sees is perfect righteousness of Christ. He says, okay, come on in. And we go on in because Jesus expiated us and he was the propitiatory, propiti- you know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> you know, stood, it, stood in front of us to cover us, to protect us so that we of all people, could have life abundant today and life eternal forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for getting us through that. Thank you for just amazing love that you have for us. That you would go to the greatest of lengths to ensure that we could have life with you today and forever. We pray the saints in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, to continue that theme of forgiveness, we celebrate the sacrament of the Lord's Supper today. And Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, he took, he took the bread and he, and he broke it. And said, this is my body, it's given for you. Eat of it, all of you, and and do this in remembrance of me. And and, and so we do. And in the same manner, after supper, he took the cup. And said, this cup is the new covenant in in my blood. Because blood had to be shed. It's the new covenant. He said, drink of it, all of you, and do this in remembrance of me. And so we do. For as long as you eat this bread, drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. And so let us pray. A gracious God, you love us so much. He provided a way for us to have fellowship with you, to be reconciled with you that we can actually approach your throne of grace in our time of need and just talk to you anytime we want because of what your son Jesus did for us. And so around this table today, we say thank you. Thank you and thank you for being the gracious host that you are. In Jesus' name, amen. So this time I'd like to invite our servants to come forward, meet me at the table. Uh, whose table is this? Not my table. It's not Mountain View Presbyterian Church's table. It's the Lord's table. And uh, you're all invited uh, to the table. And uh, so let's taste and see that the Lord is good. And if you'll just hold the element uh, until we'll, until we'll all take it at one time as a sign of our unity in Christ.
the body of Christ. The cup of salvation. And let us pray. My gracious God, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Oh, it just looks like grape juice. Tastes like grape juice. Probably is grape juice. And that's bread bought at a local grocery store. And yet, ah, they represent so much more. Uh, the blood that was shed for us, uh, the body that was given for us, so that our own sins would be expiated, so that Jesus would stand and cover us as the propitiatory sacrifice. And you looked at it all and said, this is good. And so we are forgiven. We are forgiven in relationship with you now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. This time, let me invite you to take the friendship pad located here on the center. I'll take that, write your name and numbers, and pass it on to the people sitting next to you. And also, this time, let's lift up to God our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings. Open the gates of the town. 
temple, strew palms on the conqueror's way. Open your hearts, O oh, ye people, that Jesus may enter today. Hark from the sick and the dying, forgetting their couches of pain. Voices, glad voices with rapture, a swelling, a swelling, a swelling, a glad refrain. Voices, glad voices with rapture, a swelling, a glad, a glad.
gracious God, all that we have, all that we are, all that we give is but your own. And so we give these gifts unto you, knowing they'll be used by you to glorify your name here on this earth, in our world, in our church, in our neighborhood, in our community, in our state, our country, and our world. Thank you for the generosity of you, and thank you that we get to respond in kind. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's continue standing as we sing together, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. Thanks for coming out and learning a couple new words today. And, uh, but the good thing is that whether the new words or old words, the same word is always the same. Same as ever, uh, for God so loved the world, for God so loved each of you, that he gave his only son. And whoever believes in whoever, whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So that's what we celebrate week in and week out. So let's go forth in the world in peace and be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Love and serve the Lord with gladness and with joy. Honor all people. And laugh often and fear not. And go forth knowing that the unconditional love of God the Father Almighty, the amazing grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship, communion, and the power. The power of the Holy Spirit is with you now and forever. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Go get them.